There's two people I want to talk about in today's episode. One is Kathy Wood, the queen of investing, and the other one is Dr. Michael J. Burry, the investor that was played by the actor Christian Bale in the movie The Big Short. Now, Michael J. Burry is known for going short the big banks in 2007. He saw the impending doom that nobody else seemed to see, and he was initially laughed at and mocked because of his bet against the banks. Nobody could believe that the banks would fail. And as a result, they thought he was crazy. Well, we know that the banks did eventually fail, and Dr. Burry was proven correct. Now, years later, he's taken to Twitter to give us another warning. This one is pretty cryptic. He says things on Twitter like this just recently. People say I didn't warn last time. I did, but no one listened. So I warned this time, and still no one listens. But I will have proof I warned. What is he warning about? He's warning about inflation. That's what today's episode is going to be about, is inflation. Now, I have over $200,000 invested in the stock market in just my passive income account. On my secondary YouTube channel, I have another account for that that has $60,000 invested. All things total, I have around $270,000 in the stock market. So when Michael Burry is now giving us these cryptic warnings, he's warning about inflation, and he's trying to outline a case of why investors should pay attention to it, I think it's worth paying attention to. I think it's worth diving in to see what we can do to protect our portfolio and our holdings from inflation. So let's first go ahead and look at some of the things that he's been saying. In his first tweet, he outlines the case for inflation. He says, the US government is inviting inflation. They're doing it with modern monetary theory tinged policies, brisk debt to GDP ratio, which is true. We have a lot of debt compared to the amount of gross domestic product that we have and then M2 increases. He says trillions more stimulus and reopening to boost demand as employee and supply chain costs skyrocket. And then he links some graphs to illustrate this. One of those charts that Burry shares is called the M2 money supply. And we're looking at it right here. This shows basically how much liquidity is in people's households. So the average US household how much money do they have in their checking account, their saving account, and some type of money market fund or anything like that? It's just how much liquidity they have. And you can see this since the 1980s. The amount of money that people have generally goes up over time as inflation goes up over time. And this is a gradual increase over time, as we all know that we've had inflation over the past 35 years. But we can see what Michael Burry's highlighting in just the past year. If I zoom into the past 10 years, it illustrates this point more clearly. We see the normal levels of inflation, the amount of money going up over time, and then we get to 2020. Look how steep this increase is. It doesn't follow the normal trend. This is about six years worth of normal growth in the amount of liquidity that households have in just one year. We skipped forward six years. And I think that this is what Dr. Burry is referring to. Now, I don't think you need to be some type of legendary investor like Dr. Burry to realize that when there's this much more of something, typically the value of it has to go down a little. That's what inflation is. There's more money in people's households. There's more money going around, and typically that puts downward pressure on the value of a dollar. Dr. Burry continues on with his warning, saying speculative stock bubbles ultimately see the gamblers take on too much debt. That's the big cue of whether or not we see speculation in the market. People are wanting to return so bad, they're willing to take on more and more debt. And we've seen this not only on TikTok with unwise investment choices of people taking on massive amounts of debt and race for easy money, but we also see it with major corporations. Margin debt popularity accelerates at peaks, and at this point, the market is dancing on a knife's edge. He calls this a nice edge. Passive investing's IQ drain and stocks only go up hype add to the danger. So he's talking about this overall trend of, of stocks only going up and the fun that people are having in the market is contributing to this more careless and risky behavior. If people actually start to believe that stocks only go up, that is dangerous for the market. And then he also shares a graph that illustrates this even more clearly. It shows the value of the S&P 500 going up to extreme highs. And then on the inverse, it's difficult to read because the red line is inversed. The amount of margin debt is also increasing to record highs. And we can see how this has played out throughout history. Both times in recent history, when the S&P 500 has soared to record highs and the amount of margin debt that investors are taking on has also soared to record highs, the market eventually had a significant significant pullback. It had a significant downturn. We don't know for sure if that's going to happen this time, but it is something to be aware of. That has been a pattern. Dr. Burry says consumers do not expect inflation. This is a chart of the five-year inflation expectations by consumers. So this chart shows 
uh, what percentage of inflation people expect. And he says, going back to the last big one, that was in the 1970s, the 1980s, half of us were not alive during this last one. Two, betting on inflation has been a widowmaker trade on Wall Street. So he's saying that not only do nobody really expect significant amounts of inflation, but even if you do expect inflation and you're brave enough to say it, it usually means that you're not going to get a lot of money. You're not going to get a lot of investments. It's a widowmaker trade on Wall Street. You become a little bit of a pariah at that point. So Wall Street really doesn't have much of an incentive to make a big prediction on inflation. Now, of course, we don't know if Michael Burry's right. He could be giving a warning that doesn't really pan out, but he's been pretty confident with these type of predictions in the past. Not only did he win on a huge bet against the big smart banks like Goldman Sachs, but more recently he went against a lot of other hedge funds betting on a long position of GameStop before Reddit was involved and gaining a 1,500% return in the process. So he's somebody that I consider an incredibly good investor. Out of all the people you can follow on Twitter or actually pay attention to, this is one individual that I actually do pay attention to what he's saying. I think that many of his decisions and logic are very firmly grounded. Now, another investor that's no stranger to headlines is Kathy Wood, the queen of investing. She recently said in an interview, there will be a valuation reset. There will be fear. This has caused a lot of people to be concerned a little bit about the markets. When it comes from Kathy Wood, who is known to be one of the most forward-thinking, optimistic investors in the market, when she says that there's going to be fear and there's going to be a valuation reset, a lot of investors pay attention to this news. Here's the exact interview where she talks about this valuation reset. It seems undeniable to me, though, that you must be thinking about the impact of higher rates on the kinds of stocks that have been tried and true winners for you all throughout, whether it's the Signature Fund, the FinTech Innovation Fund, and even other areas of the ETFs that you have. Are you worried that as rates go up, those stocks could come down? He's talking specifically about the federal funds rate. That's what he means by when he's saying the rates going up. The federal fund rates over the past 20 years has gone down dramatically. Right now, it's basically at zero. It's at 0.1%, which is low as it can really go until it starts to dip into the negatives, which the Federal Reserve does not want to do. When the federal fund rate is low, it helps spur economic activity. It makes money more abundant. Companies can get loans easier. They can grow their revenues. They can pay marketing and sales team to grow their business. That helps the economy grow. The problem is, when the economy starts to heat up too much, that causes inflation. And the way that the Fed combats inflation is by raising the federal funds rate. If we see significant inflation in the U.S., the Federal Reserve will be forced to raise the federal funds rate. So Dr. Burry is, in essence, predicting that the Federal Reserve will be forced to raise the federal funds rate. Now, Kathy Wood is being asked, what happens if that happens? What happens if the federal funds rate starts to increase? Well, I, I do believe if rates were to take a sharp turn up, uh, that we would uh, we would see a valuation reset, and our portfolios would uh, would be um, prime candidates for that valuation reset. Of course, what she means by valuation reset is that the multiples her companies are trading at, the ones she's invested in, they will be contracted. They will come down to a much lower PE ratio, a much lower forward earnings. And I, of course, think Kathy Wood is correct. There's two basic reasons that I believe stocks go up or down. The first one is because the company's growing or declining. If a company grows and it has more customers, more revenue, more earnings, that company's going to go up in value. The number two reason that the stock either goes up or down is multiple expansion or contraction. This means that every company's traded on a multiple. The price to earnings, the price to sales, every company is given a multiple by investors. That's what they're willing to pay for that company. That can change over time based on certain sentiment about the company. I can give you a couple examples. Apple, for instance, throughout most of its history has traded at a PE ratio, a price to earnings, of around anywhere from 8 to like 15. Even as recent as 2018, it was trading at a 12 price to earnings. Right now, it's trading at a 30. That means that Apple stock has over doubled in value without doubling the amount of earnings or the amount of sales. 
They've just doubled in value. Now, I think there's specific reasons why. Even though Apple hasn't doubled their sales, they have moved to a more subscription model, which makes the stock usually trade at a higher multiple. This is an example of a company being re-rated. Investors have looked at the stock and said, there's certain things going on that makes us willing to pay more for the same amount of earnings. That happened with Apple, and you're also seeing that happen with Disney as they move to a subscription model. That makes the investors re-rate the stock, and the multiples might go up. What Kathy Wood is saying in this interview is that if inflation spikes and that federal fund rate has to go up, it might cause investors to re-rate these type of growth stocks to much lower multiples. Now, again, going back to my portfolio, I think I have a decent amount of money in the stock market and I care about protecting this money. So when I hear talks about inflation on the rise, valuation resets, multiple contractions, that starts putting off alarm bells. What do I do in that situation to protect my money and my assets that I spent a lot of time building up? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Let's first take a look at Kathy Wood's investing strategy. If we get into a situation of high inflation or the high federal funds rate that causes a valuation reset, she believes that this will eventually happen. So she's not predicting that this isn't going to happen. She's ready for it. And here's her investing strategy when it does eventually happen. What we will do during a correction, especially a severe correction like the coronavirus crisis presented, we will sell names in which which are creating losses now because again we've bought them we've diversified and bought them more recently sell those names creating losses to buy our highest conviction names what she's outlining is basically a tax loss harvesting strategy meaning that she has a lot of stocks she's invested in when we do eventually have some type of valuation reset or recession she's going to sell out of the companies that are not her biggest convictions companies that she basically holds to just have some cash on hand that can rise up with inflation. She will sell out of those companies and then put that money into her biggest convictions. In doing so, she'll take on a realized loss and lower her tax burden. That is the strategy that Kathy Wood plans on doing in the next recession. Now, Dr. Burry also gives his input on where we should have our money during high levels of inflation. He says, historically, this chart that's on the screen shows a good place to be during significant but relative level of inflation. So this is a historical chart. He says it may be a little bit different in the future, but historically, long-term government bonds have been the worst place to put your money during high levels of inflation. And real assets are typically what's returned best. Owning real estate in high levels of inflation seems to be a really good hedge. But owning stocks isn't a bad place to be either. Large cap stocks and small cap seem to return positively during high levels of inflation. Now, Michael Burry is not the only notable investor that thinks that bonds are not the place to be during high levels of inflation. Warren Buffett in 2011 gave his input on where your money should be if we see inflation. So there's a lot of cash out there, actually. It's sitting on the books of the banks. It's sitting on the balance sheets of corporations. It's sitting at the Fed, and, a trillion it, and a half. Exactly. <laughs> so um, there, it could, if, if, if people were afraid, it spark inflation. It, it could be ignited in the fears of of the fact that there's just so much money, credit created, that we could have inflation. Uh, but it's sitting there right now primarily because I think that we go back to that thing where we started, confidence. Do you f are, are you a bond buyer now at these levels? No, Do you worry I, about inflation? Do you no, worry about I, the dollar? I, I, it's idiotic to buy bonds. <laughs> okay. He just frankly says it's idiotic to buy bonds. And he continues on hammering this point down that bonds are not the place to be. No, I mean... The one thing I can, I can tell you very few things for sure in economics, one thing I can guarantee you is that the value of the dollar will be less 10, 20, 50 years from now than it is now. I mean, there isn't any question about that. So it is. It so we know that Warren Buffett does not like having his money in bonds, especially during predicted high levels of inflation. But where does he like having his money? The answer, I think, is pretty obvious. So what are you doing to hedge your bets? I just own good businesses. He goes on to outline how having your money in productive businesses is proven to work while having your money in savings accounts and money market accounts is doomed to fail. You've got, you've got a few choices. You can go with fixed dollars one way or another, your money market funds, bonds, anything else. That's guaranteed to, to not work. It, it's so funny. I mean, people, it is funny for the people to do it. But when you put your money in something that's supposedly safe, if you put your money in a money market fund or treasury bills now, that, that is guaranteed to go south. You can buy farms, you can buy apartment houses, duplexes, various kinds of real estate, or you can buy good businesses, and you're, or you can buy little pieces of good businesses. Now, among that choice, good businesses are the cheapest. 
by some margin. Now, this interviewer seems somewhat shocked by his response, so definitively saying that bonds are not worth it, that they're destined to fail, and the same thing with money market accounts or savings accounts, that those are going to be worth less money in the future. But Warren Buffett goes on to make another definitive claim about the future. Okay, so so we're, do you, does that give you an outlook for the uh, stock market over the next 10 years? If you yeah. know the dollar, okay. Yeah, yeah, 10 years from now, it'll be a lot higher. I just don't know about 10 months from now. Okay. He says 10 years from now, the stock market's going to be a lot higher. I just don't know about 10 months from now. Well, luckily for us, this interview was in 2011, exactly 10 years ago. So we can see if this prediction was correct. And of course, Warren Buffett was correct. If we go back to 2011, since this interview took place, the stock market's up nearly 200% without dividends being reinvested. That is a significant increase over the past decade. But we can also look at Buffett's prediction of short-term treasuries. Since 2011, the short-term treasury ETF has only returned 1.1%. That's barely any gain, and that's a significant loss if you're factoring in inflation. So Buffett was correct on both accounts. The stock market and productive companies went up over 10 years, and the people that kept their money in savings or short-term treasuries or quote-unquote safe assets lost a lot of money over that time period. They lost not only a lot of value due to inflation, but they lost a lot of opportunity cost. So to summarize what I've learned looking into this topic of inflation is first of all, there's a high price to certainty. If you store a large amount of money in a savings account or a money market account or other short-term investments, you're going to pay a high price over a long period of time. That money's value will be eaten away day after day. If you have your money in productive assets, they win over time. Warren Buffett in 2011 said confidently, without question, that people that put their money into companies will win over the next 10 years. They will get returns, that the stock market will be much higher. And I believe the same is true today. I think the stock market will be much higher over the next 10 years. So I plan on continuing to invest, not worrying too much about short-term trading. And if we do have a significant pullback, if the stock market goes down 50%, I plan on employing a strategy similar to Kathy Wood. I'll sell out of holdings that I consider not my core holdings, and I'll put the proceeds of those sales into the companies I like the most, into my core holdings. So I think that will be a good opportunity to reduce my tax burden and build up the core holdings of my portfolio. But until that happens, I continue on with the same strategy. I continue on investing in companies like Disney, Costco, Nike, Apple, and other companies I think will be very productive and give their investors good returns over the next 10 years. So I hope this video answered some of your questions about inflation. If you want to see my passive income account grow over time, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be showing updates every single week of what happens with this portfolio. And if you want to check out the Patreon, it helps support this content. We already have about 1,500 members, so it's grown significantly. A lot of people are having fun there. So you can try out the Patreon if you're interested. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time.